Hi, thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch. This is the project we're making today. This is the project I made during Facebook, uh, my Facebook Live video earlier this week, but I'm going to film a quick and cleaner version for you too. Okay, so I've got crumb cake cardstock that measures eight and a half by six, and then I've got another piece uh, to stamp um, the gingerbread man. I'll explain more in just a minute. I have another crumb cake piece for this circle here and the gingerbread man. Cherry cobbler for that circle back there. Very vanilla for our greeting. That's way more than what I need. That's just what I had in my scrap drawer. And then I have four pieces of the Farmhouse Christmas, no, Festive Farmhouse Designer Series paper. That measures one and three quarters by one and three quarters, so that's four of them. And then two pieces that measure one and three quarters by three quarter, okay? So I'm going to get the Simply Scored Scoring Tool, and we'll go ahead and score this. I'm going to place it on the eight and a half inch side that I like to call the landscape side. <laughs> And I'm going to score it at two, four, six, eight. I'm going to turn it on the portrait side, which is the six inch side, and I'm going to score it at two inches on both sides. So that's two inches. I'm going to flip it around and score it again at two. Okay. Over here on this side, this is your half inch side. What we're going to do is cut here and we're going to remove this section and we're going to do the same thing over here on this side so we're going to remove that section we're going to angle cut these sides just like that down here what we want to do is cut up to the score line on each of these and we're going to do it on both sides okay same thing over here Okay, now, remember this half inch side here. Now we wanna take the scallop tag topper punch and we want to scallop the side closest to the half inch. So we're gonna do this one, skip that one and do this one, okay? So I'm gonna place the top or the piece section in there and punch and then slide down and do the third one, okay? We have made this box before in a smaller size, so this is just a larger size. I did have a request for this, and uh, like I said on Facebook the other day, I apologize, I can't remember the person's name. Sometimes it's, um, yeah, my mind just doesn't work. <laughs> I should have wrote it down. I'm going to try to remember that. Okay, I just trimmed that. It seemed like I uh, went out of the line a little bit. Okay, so now what we want to do is put our adhesive on. So this right here is going to get attached right there. And then that's going to be the back of our box. So this is going to be the front. So I always like to put the adhesive on the bottom of the front piece. Okay, and that would be this one. And now that I've done that, I better make sure that I said that right. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, okay, that one. I am going to use tear and tape. And then over here on this side. Okay. Take my paper piercer and remove the backing. I'm going to go ahead and just add or attach this first. Okay. Now, before I go ahead and assemble the bottom, let's go ahead and add our uh, designer series paper. So I'm just gonna flip these over and add adhesive to them. That would make a beautiful color too, right? So this project was one, oh wait, I forgot to do something. So I'm gonna rewind for just a second. 
goodness, it's a good thing I caught this uh, before it's too late. So, yay! Um, I'll make sure I make a note of it. Before you attach this, you want to do this next step, okay? So I'm going to get this Simply Scored Scoring Tool out one more time. And we need to score the top of our box on both of the scallop pieces at one inch. So look, I'm going to line it up just like that. And I'm going to take my pick your take your pick tool and score right across at one inch. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I didn't mess it up. Okay. Now let's add the designer series paper. And I think I was going to ask something a couple minutes ago, right when I was remembering that I forgot to do this, but that thought went clear out the window. You could sponge the edges of these if you'd like. Oh, I was going to talk about this project was one that I was considering for my um, Farmhouse Christmas um, stamp kit of the month. And I didn't, it wasn't one because this, um, this is not in that stamp set. And so I try to keep the stamp kit of the month. Um, I try to just use just that stamp set. I'm sure there'll be at some point, there'll be another stamp set. I always say that we could use a different greeting, but so far I've tried to keep them uh, using just what's in that bundle, along with some additional framelits. So. Okay. Come on, I was ripping my cardstock. That's why I added another piece of tear and tape. That's what I get for talking, right? Okay, so there's our box. Fold this over, and then there it is. Isn't it so cute? Okay, so I'm gonna take the burlap trim, and cut that at the top that up a bit and then I'm going to take the farmhouse uh, cotton twine how about that <laughs> and this is also in the bundle um, so those of you that are getting it and we use all three colors of it because uh, there's um, mossy meadow cherry cobbler and very vanilla Okay, so now we're going to stamp the gingerbread man. Love that stamp. I've said it a hundred times, probably. Y'all are probably sick of me saying it. Uh, all I'm going to do is really ink up the gingerbread man. I normally uh, do stamp up this whole thing and then cut them all out because you can always use those tags on something else. But um, I have enough, to be honest. I have used this thing so much, it's already very well loved okay so there's that one and then we're going to cut a uh, stamp the happy christmas wishes with cherry cobbler and this is from the farmhouse christmas stamp set okay so if you get the bundle of the tags and tidings stamp set these are the framelits this one right here um, for the this part, we're using the layering circles framelits, and these are the three we're using. Okay, so we're going to cut the greeting out with this one, the cherry cobbler with this one, and then the crumb cake with that one, okay? So I'm going to get the big shot. Okay, so here's the big shot. I got a platform and a cutting pad. We'll start out with the cherry cobbler piece, and let's see if we can go ahead and cut out the other scallop circle at the same time. That way we can save some time. As long as they're not too close together, you can usually pull that off. Okay, there's that one. Okay, now we're gonna cut out the gingerbread man. And 
And last but not least is the greeting. Okay, so a regular dimensional goes on the back of the very vanilla. That's going to get attached to the cherry cobbler. Then we're going to use regular adhesive for the cherry cobbler layer. Ideally, you would have done that first, but I always say I make things a little bit more difficult for myself. And then we're going to add this to the box, also with regular adhesive. <laughs> And I'm going to raise this up just a tad so that I can have room for the gingerbread man, okay? So he's going to go right down here. But first we want to cut that little piece off because we're not he's not going to be hanging or being attached. He's not a tag today. He's just a little a little man. Okay. So mini dimensional And I think, yeah, the bottom half of him will work. If not, we can always add another one. We can slide it in there. Okay, and then the final step is we're going to take the red rhinestones and add them. And if you think these are a little too red for you, because this is cherry cobbler, you can always take our cherry cobbler Stampin' Blend marker and go over them, and it darkens them up, makes them a little richer. The red doesn't bother me. Ruh roll, that's crooked. <gasps> Whoops. Okay, so there you have it. Pretty cute, right? Thanks a lot. Have a great day.